Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You always hear him, you never see him. Hey, you saw him. The elusive fleeter. Huh? Sound like a pop of the Brent mixing a drink. Everybody drink. There you go. Thursday night. It's Thursday night. It's Thursday night. Thursday night. Huh? No ten minutes tonight. <laughs> no, no ten minutes tonight. Why not? No. Uh, well, I could tell you, but then I'd be given. I'd be given. Be giving my stance away way too soon, way too oh. early. I'd be giving my stance away. Yeah. So is there a surprise? A Tim, a Tim Bits related surprise later? No, zero, no surprise at all with regards to Tim Bits, which is actually kind of disappointing now that you mentioned it. I kind of, kind of want Tim Bits now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sorry. I have a surprise for you. Okay. It might not be one that you care for. Although you, you'll find it interesting, it's kind of a, it's kind of it's bittersweet. It, it's it's hard for me, but oh. um, yeah. So, uh, all right, I'll just get to it. Oh boy! It, no, it hold is... on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> bittersweet. This so, what, is... what do you think it is? I have no clue. Like, are you are you quitting? Like, you quitting music? No. Are you like putting the booze on hold? No. I don't know. That'd be bittersweet for me. No, it's something uh, that I want to show you. That you want to show me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm done guessing now. We know how well my guessing does when it comes to, you know, trying to figure out what you're thinking. So. It's this. Whoa. You can see that it's full. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So I actually found one. Wow, Brent had a bottle of Blanton's. Okay, yeah. all right, so, not so, so bad, folks. Blanton's. So, so the the good news is I found one. The bad news is they would only sell me one. Oh, that's right. It's was, you only buy one. Yes. So there's a limit of one per customer. I was going to buy you one, but they would not. There was a security guard there actually. So the way that this works, this is funny. The LCBO puts a it, like if you go on the app, they if you type in Blanton's, it, it shows you. Um, you have you pick a store that's closest to you, and there was one in Toronto, and I, I watched it for a little while, and they all went. There was like twenty of them; they were gone. So now it's a game, right? So then there's a <laughs> they, so so the next day there were 122 or something like that. I thought, oh, okay, I'll be able to get one of these for sure. And I waited, and then they were all gone too. And I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. So it happened again at the same store. I think 103 showed up and I drove down and I went into the store. Are you bringing it up? I'm trying to find it, but I I don't, it doesn't, nothing. So I went into the store. They were all on a table in the middle of the store, uh, flanked by a security guard. Who was like standing there with his arms folded? This big guy. All right. Right. No, I know it was hilarious. It was like it was like Raiders of the Lost Ark. So like... it was, and I was like, "Oh, there they are." So there's a like a whole table of them. There's probably about eighty of them on the table, right? And uh, I said, uh, "What's the limit?" And he he, he does this one like, "What?" Like, <laughs> super <laughs> awesome. like, okay. Do you know this? Yeah, I got it. And so uh, I, I took my one and I, I left. And this is it. It is wow. unsealed. It is entirely bittersweet. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was going I planned to get like two or three, but he was very uh, adamant about me only leaving with one. Well, I appreciate the thought. I'm not going to bring up the fact that you literally just drank a bottle and uh, you're not willing to part with that one. But that's 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 great, man. I hope you, I hope you, I hope you enjoy there, it. There is like there is another one. So if you look, oh, look right there. What are there's you freaking there. looking? That was you, from last eh? year. There's just a little bit you. left of that one. Wow. <laughs> wow. Greedy George yeah, over there. The, here's the deal. If you come right. over, I'll share it with you. Okay, that's fair. All right. Yep. We're on. 
All right. That's sick. That's yeah. great, man. I'm glad you got one. My buddy actually messaged me uh, when when I was in Florida. I was in Florida last week, mm-hmm. and he messaged me on uh, on Instagram. He's like, "Yo, did you change your number?" And I was like, "I was like, no, but I'm in Florida, so my phone is on airplane mode, so I'm not getting you know roaming fees yeah, for yeah. for text messages." I'm like, "No, I'm in Florida." And he goes, "Oh, he's like." Uh, he's like I was I messaged you. I was gonna. I was trying to see if you wanted a bottle of Blantons because oh. they're at Front and Spadina. No and way. I res- yeah, and I responded back in all caps. I said the answer is always yes. Oh. <laughs> like, like if you've got to ask yourself, would Alex want a bottle of Blantons? Because he, we've talked about this before. Right. I'm like, don't send me a text message asking if I'd want one. Oh, like, yeah. like if money's a problem, go into debt for me, and I'll pay you back. You know, it was like, like it's, there's seventy bucks. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Oh. But you know what I, you know what I, yeah. So that happened, but you know, I appreciate the thought. I, pre- I appreciate both you guys thinking of me, uh, not coming through for me, but I appreciate you thinking of me. Um, <laughs> I you know what like I did? The, like five other dudes who were like, "Oh, why didn't you get me one?" <laughs> Because I couldn't, because Bernie over there was going to break my arm if I tried right. to sneak a second. Yeah. Um, uh, but I did have a bottle of, uh, when I was in Florida, my mm-hmm. father-in-law, great man, bought a bottle of uh, Heaven's Door. What's bourbon. that? It's Bob Dylan's. Oh, uh, wow. Bourbon, yeah. Where's that? Distilled? Yeah. Kentucky? Oh, God, yeah. Bob Dylan. I think so. I Bob no Dylan's, idea. Heaven's Door. Yeah, 125 proof. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Good Lord. Yeah. So, uh, it was interesting. Had that with a nice, with a nice cigar, had a bourbon and a cigar. And, um, no wonder Bob's voice sounds like that. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. So yeah, it was, it was a bit of, bit of burn, but I, but I did learn he, uh, my father also has a, uh, cigar aficionado magazine mm. and I guess bourbons are kind of really becoming a big thing yeah. these days. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, clearly we've started a trend here, uh, are. thanks to this show. So when, <laughs> when I was there, he's like, here's a magazine on a thing on about bourbon. So I just read up a little bit about what the proof means and how like 125 proof it, it like the higher the proof can be manufactured, but it depends on whether it says barrel cask or single barrel cask yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah. Because that, that means that it's as like true to the taste and flavor. That's Whereas right. if it doesn't say that and it's a high proof, it just means that it just it's it's been manufactured to be that way. Right. So a lot of the alcohol goes into the barrel at like one twenty proof or lower, and then it depends on what evaporates in the barrel, whether it's the water or the alcohol that makes it a higher proof point. And so then when they pour it out and they start bottling it, when you see bottles of bourbon that have varied proofs so like it's 125.7 or 126 that means that it's been less manufactured whereas if you see a steady proof or f- alcohol volume that means that it's been manufactured to stay at that level so when that that proof level is high it gives you the opportunity to mix in as much water as you want to get it to that right taste so there are people that have like eye droppers of water to try and like put in the right amount of water into high proof bourbons to get to a certain level of what they call like euphoria of of a bourbon taste are yeah. you kidding and me it's, seriously like yeah eye these people in their glass like doing this one yeah exactly they'll put it in a drop will it taste yet put another but that's what the proof does yeah. so 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 when you have high proof the more water you mix in the more dilution yes yeah but you can you can you can actually make it the way you want it to taste because with the proof level, it's so close to the true bourbon taste with all of the, the natural ingredients right. and then including the taste of, you know, the barrel, the wooden barrel, that when you start mixing in the water, it just kind of dilutes it a little bit, but starts bringing a different flavor out. So no if it's too harsh, add some water. Yeah. Wow. Look at you. I know. How about that? Yeah, there you go. So well. that's why I feel like drinking Basil Hayden. You know, we enjoy it, but I'm like, I, I guess it's because it's well manufactured. It's not necessarily like a connoisseur's. Uh, well, bourbon. you know what? It's it's. 
I don't know. But it's good. It, it's still my favorite. I still liked it more than Heaven's Door. Heaven's Door was nice. It was it burned, <laughs> burned a little bit with that okay. proof point, but but it uh, tasted great with a cigar. So good. Wow, look at you, cigar and some yeah. bourbon. Yeah, man. Wow, living Let's it do up. It. Let's do it. Oh yeah. You think Bob Seger drinks bourbon? Uh, I bet you he does. Yeah. With that kind of a voice? No oh, doubt. No doubt, no doubt. That no doubt, no is doubt. a whiskey-soaked voice, if I've ever heard one. Whiskey-drenched. Oh, yeah. What a, what a voice Bob Seger has. You know, as I went through and listened to this album, I felt it a very, um, I want to say calming, familiar. There was something that was very comforting mm-hmm. about listening to Bob Seger sing. I don't know if you feel that way, but there's just something about his 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 voice or the entire his voice. Yeah, it, 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 his his voice, his voice. I don't know. There's something about it. I can't even really describe it. I don't. I don't know how you would describe it because it's not smooth. Look, it's just it's 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 perfect. You know, I've always and I know that a lot of people agree. Like I've always loved Bob Seger's voice. And that, I mean, that is his, you know, the songs are great, but that's his real claim to fame. No, that's why, that's why I just like, you know, when you listen to it, you just kind of feel like you feel good. You feel okay. You feel like everything is all right listening to Bob Seger, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Like he just, that's what, that's what his voice does. Yeah. It just, it's just, it's calming. It's calming. Yeah. It, is, it is so rooted in classic rock and roll, you know, and I think he knows yeah. that he, um, that's his niche is like Chuck Berry, like the old classic stuff. And this album night moves is really all about that. And that's interesting, Alex, because you think about this record and this was his, you know, people think this was his breakout record. This is his ninth record, believe it or not. So he had kind of gone, he was from Michigan. He kind of had gone, um, through the States and had some minor hits. He had Ram the Gambler Man, which I love. Um, that was Great a minor, song. Oh, I love, love that song. Oh, like, love, man. love, so love good. the live version of that song. Um, but it wasn't until this record came out that he really was able to, um, you know, kind of achieve prominence and, and, and really kind of make a name for himself. Night, Moves, Night Moves did that for him. Uh, and it's funny because he turned 30 when he recorded it during the writing and recording of this album, he turned 30. And so that's reflected in a lot of these songs. When you think about night moves, it's a reflection on his younger days, you know, the night moves that he had with his girlfriend, but also like how the night moves, you know, when he's thinking back on it as an older man, rock and roll never forgets main street. Um, it's, it's, it's him being introspective and retrospective. So interesting record. It's not, it's not written for kids. It's written for, you know, people who are in their thirties, which is an interesting take. Maybe that's why I loved it so much. (laughs) 32, you know, wait, what's the year? 2022. I just turned 33. 33. Yeah. You don't even know your age. I knew your age. I knew you were 33. (laughs) You're ding oh, dong. Thanks, man. You didn't I know. know you're 33. Well, I know. And you know what? You didn't even get me a bottle of Blanton's for my birthday. Well, it, it was just a. T- maybe, maybe this is your bottle of Blanton's. <laughs> no, we get out of here. Keep it. You did all the hard work. You did the legwork, man. I can't take that from you. Now, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's totally, it's totally, uh, totally reflected in some of those songs. And it just, just so nice to listen to, man. It's just it, everything. Like, uh, top th- like these first three songs right off the hop rock and roll never forgets oh. night moves the fire down below like, right. but like what a what a trio of songs to to hit you with and it's crazy this is album album nine album from number nine so that again is wild. it goes to show you that this was this was put out in 1976 mm-hmm so it goes to show you that back then, like there was um, artists in a repertoire. What, what did they call that? Research and development. No, that's not right. They called it, I can't remember what they called it, but th- there was a support system where they would sign artists and expect their first three albums to be crap, right? Because they were, they, they were kind of developing an artist. 
maybe it was called artists in development. Um, I don't remember, but anyway, so they had assumed that the first three or four records were just going to be kind of like introductory, you know, and if they were hits, then great. But they expected artists to blossom around that four and five kind of album category. And Bob Seger's a great example. Like he put out eight records previous to this that, wow, you know, yeah, like yeah. that doesn't happen today. Like, you, you know, your first single no time for that. start, then you're no done. Time for that. Like you're done, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no time for that. Well, it, yeah. I mean, this is, that's, that's so wild. He said they went from, he said they never had a touring, like a bus tour. He said they were, they basically went from touring in cars, from playing bars to venue to venue. Mm. This album came out and they skipped the bus tours and go right to jumbo jets and playing arenas because of, because of this album. He, he, so his live album really broke him in my opinion. So it was called Live Bullet. And that was the Ramblin' Gamble Man live on there in Nutbush, City Limits, like all those tunes. Uh, Beautiful Loser. That album really kind of shot him into the stratosphere. And it came out, I think he had recorded most of this as that album was being released. And then this came out, I believe. I could have that wrong. But that was the album that allowed him to make that jump. And there's a, you know, people were saying that um, that was the album that uh, allowed him to buy like a massive house where his band could actually just come to him and like record and and, uh, and rehearse and practice in the basement and, and write songs down there. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, this was right around that time, but I think the live album came out first and then this came out after. But yes, he made a massive, massive jump. Right. Well, I th- and I think that live album he mentions too that he can't write while he's on tour. Like he's he's a guy that's got to go and he's got to go away and he's got to sit down. And he's got like his thinking and and really think about writing his music because he was talking about um, Don Henley being a good buddy of his, and he said that Henley could just go and he could write anywhere. He could write a song any like no problem anytime, but he needed to be somewhere where he could sit down and really write and focus on writing and he said that those live albums afforded him that opportunity to you know to guess take time away and, and write right it, apparently night moves took him quite a long time to uh write like he spent mm. a long time on that and he actually was quite influenced by jungle land i think by springsteen where oh, jungle nice. land's got like all these crazy like bridges and multi part bridges like very intricate songwriting and he was very inspired by that he applied that kind of mode of songwriting to um night moves because he was stuck and he didn't know how to finish the song and that's how he did it cool one other wild thing that i heard before we get into the songs was that one of these years i mean like you talk about touring you talk about playing a lot Mm. these guys he said him and his band played 265 nights I love that. Do you know why? Wild. You know why? Because that means he put in his 10,000 hours. Right. He played. And that validates him as an artist and a performer. And again, I'm, you know, I'm going to be that guy who's like, you know, shaking his old fist. But that's, that's how it went, man. That's what you had to do to be good back then. And he was damn good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love I, I I love this whole thing. I love that we're talking about this. This is a yeah. great great record. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get love into it. the tunes. Rock and roll never forgets. See again a nod to the past. Right. There's a lyric in here that goes, uh, "Chuck's children out there playing his licks." Right. Yep. Chuck Berry. Chuck so it was Berry, always, it's exactly. always, it's always a, a nod to the the old school. Yeah, yeah. So and again, yeah. And you, what comes after that line though? Because what comes after that line is like, so you know they're out doing this, so you can go ahead and do it too. Yes. Like it's it's kind of just like get, go go ahead and keep doing it because I get like the whole just the name of the song, rock and roll never forgets. Like you can go out and do it. All you got to do is, you know. Come on back, and That's right. there you go. Like they'll never, you'll never. Rock and roll never forgets. It's just that simple. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a really cool phrase. 
And he and Springsteen kind of had that earnest approach, you know, I find it just like it, the, there was a sense of community and, and a welcoming kind of aspect to it that were just like pick and shovel guys out there, you know, paying tribute to the music. So come join us. Like we're just the rock and roll is a, is a, a community, you know? And I, I love that about Bob Seger. There were no airs. There was no kind of rock star BS. You know, he wrote that song, Turn the Page. That was just almost a, uh, you know, an observation of him being like this star. At the end of the day, he was just some guy who was like, you know, he would go up on stage and have his fun, but hmm. he wasn't anybody special in his mind. You know, he didn't mm. deserve the accolades that the fans would, you know, he just he just wanted to play music. He just wanted to be, yeah. you know, you know, he just wanted to play rock. I mean, that's evident, right? I mean, you talk about playing 265 nights. You don't you don't do that. You don't do that just because you're in search of fame and fortune. Right. You do that because it's in your blood. And you love it. Absolutely. I mean, you can feel like it's funny because you can feel that you can feel that in the way these songs are written and the way that these songs feel. You just you just you just feel that energy out of this band, which is really cool. Yeah, this was uh, and this is the Silver Bullet Band, by the way. So yeah. um, he was he was associated with a number of outfits before this. You know, he was Bob Seger. Then he was. Uh, the Bob Seger system, I believe. And that's where Ramblin' okay. Gamblin' Man studio version came from. But he had done a number of things, but when the Silver Bullet Band came together, it was right around this time, then things really took off because he assembled a number of crack musicians that really delivered for him. Yeah, and he, and he also brought in, I believe, a, like a rhythm section, the Muscle Shoals rhythm section from from alabama to play i'm not sure which songs exactly but you know wherever i mean you could probably figure that out but uh i mean there's there's great like the sax on this thing the backing vocals throughout like night moves like there's just so much good throughout this and night moves like you could do almost a whole show just on that tune so that was a song that he didn't think was good enough in his heart, he kind of wanted to put it out, but he wasn't sure about it. And he played it, I think, in his manager's office on the piano. And his manager was like, I don't know, so I'm not really sure about it. They were in Toronto and two of his band members, I think the story goes, hung back. And the rest of them went back to Michigan. And he kind of felt like it was the right vibe and he recorded the song. And as he wanted to record the song rather, and, and, and they did a couple takes and as they got into it, they're like, okay, I think we can pull this out. So they ended up staying, the whole team ended up staying in the miss nine till like two 30 in the morning until they got it right. Cause it was one of those things where they're climbing a mountain. They're like, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're one more take, one more take. And they did it and they got there at two 30. They did, I think like the 12th take of the song and they were like, this is it. This is magic. Huh. And that's where night moves came from. Wow. Yeah. It was a song about a woman that was one year older than him. Her name is Renee Andretti. She was an Italian woman who had a boyfriend, but her boyfriend was in the army, I believe, and he would go away for a little while. And they were kind of, you know, they would kind of get together and um, but do everything that you hear in night moves, <laughs> essentially. Right. <laughs> uh but the, and apparently he had written most of his songs. You know, I was talking about the Bob Seger system and all those other bands. He had written a lot of those songs about this woman. She was like kind of the uh, his love wow. interest. Yeah. Uh, so he finally got together with her. He was eighteen, I believe, and she was nineteen. She was one year older than him. And uh, they got together. Um, they had a little bit of a tryst. Her boyfriend came back. They went off and got married. And Seger's heart was crushed he was he was heartbroken and he was just left um you know very sad apparently uh but oh, that's where thank that's god that happened so we could get night moves <laughs> 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 because good man what a great song i think mm. we korean and i loved this song before i listened to this album this was a big song we just loved to it's so good to uh, to. just there's just every every 
moment about it. Like the the chorus is great, the chord structure is great, the the feelings you get through it are great. And then you have this little breakdown, and he and he gets real real intimate and about the sound of thunder, and all of a sudden you're kind of like, oh man. What? Like you kind of longing with him, and then and then and then in come the the back backing vocals, and the drum kicks in, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, whoa, <laughs> like what did he just do to me? Yeah, the, like the, there's so many things, right? So like the lyrics, he's talking about this woman, and he says he uses the word points. If you listen, he uses the word points twice. So he describes himself, and he says. Uh, um, something about being tall could have used a few pounds. And then he describes his dress and he says something about his pants and then points. But the points were boots. So they had pointed toes. Hardly they renowned. To, yeah. They used to call them points. Okay. So they wouldn't call them kickers or boots or anything like that. They call them points because they were pointed. Right. Okay. But then he references uh, Renee Andretti, his, his love interest. And he said she had points of her own sitting way up high. Those way are, firm and high. Those are boobs. <laughs> yeah. Right. So right. a lot of people are like, you don't, you don't know that stuff, but like, yeah. So that anyway, that's the, um, you know what? It's funny, Brad, my brother-in-law pointed that out to me. Cause I put on, we, I was telling him we were talking about night moves and he was like, he was like, Oh yeah. Talking about her points sitting way up high. He's like, yeah, he's talking about her boobs. That's so that's like, really? Yeah. So that's, that's lost in a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, he's a listener, man. He's a he's a lyrics guy. He always puts on a lot of country songs too, and he's always like, "Listen, listen to the lyrics in this one." Yeah. 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 There's another um, cool bit about that that I love. Where what's the lyric? I'm in a song from 1962. That song in interviews, people said like, "What's the song you're humming from 1962?" And he said, "Be My Baby" by the Ronettes which I love the, yeah. like a, a classic, like the song oh, yeah. that drove Brian Wilson nuts. Really? We talked about that. Oh, really? Like a long time ago in one of our episodes, I can't remember which one it was, but Brian Wilson laid in bed and listened to be my baby over and over and over again. And someone said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm done because I'll never be able to top this. And he wouldn't leave his bed. He would just play that song over and over again. Oh, you know, wow. I mean, the, remember the Bare Naked Lady song, Lying in Bed? I was just going to say, I was going to say, it was that Bare Naked Ladies ended up writing about him lying in bed listening to Be My Baby? Yes. That's Holy a true story. Smokes. He was defeated by that song. So Bob Seeger, when asked by an interview, er, said, uh, you know, what's the song you're listening to? Humming a song from 1962. It was Be My Baby. However, the interesting fact is that Be My Baby was actually released a year later in 1963. Oh, wow. Yeah. So is he a psychic? Is that what is he? Is I, don't, he... I don't know. I, I don't know if he didn't know the year, if he maybe thought it sounded cooler, if he said 1962 or three or what. Huh. But phonetically, it Bob doesn't really Sager. matter. Just but... a storyteller, eh? Wild. Hmm. Yeah. So just kind of an interesting little tidbit there. You could do a whole episode on that. We just we just did ten minutes on night moves. Oh, that's crazy. That's so good. <laughs> but it's so, so good. good. Like I you could just listen, like that's a repeat song. You could put that song on repeat. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy. Fire down below. Prostitution. I it's that's what I was that's what I figured. I think that's so. That's what I figured. Yeah. So 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 tell me, is there a few ways to interpret fire down below? Uh, there's always a few ways to interpret everything, my friend. Yeah, I know. I know. But I, okay. So here's what I'm thinking here. Okay. So far, first fire. fire, first fire I was thinking of was hell. All right. Mm -hmm. Fire down below mm -hmm. being hell. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then the, the second fire being the fire between your navel and your, and your knees. Right. Keep being, it PG. Sorry. Keep sorry. it PG. <laughs> so whether, <laughs> whether that fire, so I'm going to say, uh, two a, is the fire meaning like you're like you're ready to go? You're, right, you're right. aroused. You're ready. Like the fire's burning. Right. Um, two, because it's about prostitution, you you picked up something from a prostitute and it's burning down there. Oh, look that, at that you. would have been that would have been two B. That was, that's what I that's what I was getting. I don't, I don't think know that, for sure. that 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 Bob had kind of um, you know meant for that interpretation, but I like Got it. it. 
Okay, that's fine. No, that's fair. Yeah. Just you know, the, the thing about thing about Seeger too is that he, you know, with Night Moves again, um, he said the song cuts both ways. So the Night Moves, you know, the moves that you're trying to put on your girlfriend, um, but also, ain't it funny how the Night Moves? You know, as you get older, the Night kind of moves away. So like, there's you know, mm. dualistic kind of interpretations. Right. So the fire down below, I think perhaps does mean, maybe it means both of those, but I do believe that it means, um, the second interpretation that you're talking about more. So the, uh, carnal, um, interests ah, that people interest have. Got yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Not necessarily about, not necessarily you could about contract. having like a, a venereal disease. <laughs> we can no. contract from that yeah. carnal well, desire. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. We know. It's about having a... Uh, otherwise, it's a great tune. It's like uh, <laughs> like the guy, the guy again, too. Like, just, it's a great... Like, like, I think he seemed to be really inspired by like the R&B, you know, obviously, blues as well. With and You can feel that in this, too. You know, especially oh. with a lot of these these songs um, it, it, it's 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 classic rock and roll i know we joke about you know classic rock and i you know i don't like that title timeless um t- timeless exactly timeless but, rock. you know if you think about classic rock and not just this record you think about old time rock and roll he had not written that yet rock and roll never forgets is kind of the precursor precursor to that um this is like you think about the, the epitome of classic rock, Bob Seger is it. The next song, Sunburst, yeah. is my favorite from the record. Whoa, really? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, think about this. Like, So this is like, the, the, it, it's bizarre. It, it's so, the, When I hear this, I think Zeppelin, the Beatles, like it's so interesting it's intriguing because there are metal components in the song but it's a blues song do you know you know it's funny just real quick because i i feel that in come to papa there are some some metal like heavy metal moments Mm -hmm. in like riffs and that too but just yeah yeah no i yeah cool no no keep going tell me tell me more about sunburst no but do, do you find that like it's 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 a very interesting composition in that sense that it's it kind of it kind of melds the beatles with led zeppelin with it, with a, a kind of a, an overly blues R and B inflection. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unique and it's very interesting and it stands out beyond. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to let you ride with that one. I, I'm not sure on the Beatles yet. Cause I haven't, I don't listen to Beatles very much. Oh, we're going to so, get there. Nah. All right. Fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Because in that second part of the song, right. In the second part of sunburst, Mm -hmm. right. It picks up. It's just, first of all, so, so this is really cool to see him. You, you, you punch in, well, I know night moves isn't really, but it's like, it's such a good song, but like the first three songs are so good, uh, rock wise. And obviously night moves is melodic as, as it is. And then you get into sunburst and you're kind of dealing with like a li- like more texture. You're dealing with a little bit more, more di- like different types of notes and you're dealing with like more sophistication, I think in songwriting. Exactly. Song number four. Right. And yes. what he can do in that opening part is just, just, just musically is really, it really hooks you in. Cause you've had these three songs. You're like, Oh man, that was all so cool. And all of a sudden this comes on you're kind of like, Whoa, what's this? This is, this is interesting. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the song, he hits you with the rock and roll again. And this is again some of that. It's it's a little Black Sabbath e like I feel in this one and Come to Papa that you, you can get from it. So yeah, it's it's he does a really good job of of, of <laughs> this is so stupid. He does a really good job of writing music. He just does a great job of just like <laughs> of keeping you like like going. This is cool. Like this is great. Like what he just did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it, it's outstanding, you know, yeah. because you're right. You listen to those first three songs and they're very, uh, they flow, right? Yeah. But this one kind of sticks its head up above the crowd a little bit. And it's, it's, it's cool because you hear the chord sequence and the, the melody of it and it's instantly intriguing. You're thinking like, well, where's he going with this? 
And then like the, even the bridge is cool. And then like, it goes to all these different places and it, it's just like, it, it's very surprising. And it's very intriguing. I love, love, love the song. Next song is my favorite. First song inside too. Yeah. That's your favorite. Yeah. Sunspot baby. Sunspot baby. Oh yeah. Isn't that funny that like it, if you, ha- if you had the, I mean, you had the CD, it was like sunburst and then sunspot baby sunspot baby kind of weird that he's got like two sun songs in there and he's not really a little like bit. A, it's you know he's from michigan he's it's not a, like a super sunny guy <laughs> you know what i mean it's kind of like a little he's, he's well like, record he's, sales of this album would prove otherwise to <laughs> you or he's still from michigan it just seems, it, that would seem very strange to me that he's got like i don't know if you do have two songs that start with sun then kind of Maybe yeah, you put it me. on side A and side B, so you flipped it over and from sunburst to a sunspot. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, this right. is a great anyway, song. So it's a great riff. Song. I love it. It's just yeah. good, kind of sloppy fun. Right? It's a it's a fun tune. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, I love I love the uh, the vocal melody of it. It's it's nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's awesome. It's unique. I love it. I, I was thinking. I was trying to. Um, I was listening to, to what was I listening to? In Flames. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> uh, no, my kids have been sick, so I've been able to drive them to school. What, um, mentally sick? No, I was listening to this album, and I was back to listening to Billy Squire. Don't say no again. Good. And um, that what was the, what was the song that I really liked on that one? Two Days Gone. I really like Two Days oh, Gone. Right. Um, right. And so I listened to that one, and then I and then I put on sunspot baby and i was like oh man like these songs easily like just on on a summer playlist like from now on and uh and same with 99 in the shade by bon jovi okay so you know what's really cool about all three of those songs what's that they are deep cuts oh yeah you may not have known about any of those songs had you not listened to this entire record no you would know night moves you would know the stroke but you would not know those three songs. And that is cool. And that is what I want to get across to viewers and, you know, anybody who's listening is like, listen to the records. There are so many good songs underneath. Absolutely. No, so far, I've, so far I'm building a uh, playlist of deep cuts. That's for sure. Main Street. Yeah. Talk to me about Main Street. Love, love the song. This is about um, Ann Street in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And he talks about, you know, in the, in this bar where he used to go and watch this girl dance and stuff like that. But he used to apparently go to this bar and he, he told the story once where he had a brother and he had an older brother and his brother was like in a lot of trouble and he was the, the golden child. And his parents said, you know what, you're the, you're the good one. They used to call him, you're the, the good one. And uh, they said, you're the one that we can trust. And so he said, I could walk around Ann Arbor like past midnight at a very young age. And my parents trusted me. They knew I was going to come home. They knew I would not get thrown in jail. So that was the luxury that I had that my brother provided me that I could like check out all this stuff. And that's where the song came from. This is his observations of like watching girls dance in, in windows and of the bars and stuff like that. But you know what the coolest thing about this this song reflects um, kind of the ethos of, of Bob Seger's approach to songwriting, as I see it. Because, you know, you, you think about anybody like Bon Jovi, Van Halen, Springsteen, all talk about getting the girl. And Seeger took the alternate approach. You know, you think about songs like Beautiful Loser and um, his fascination with kind of the underdog and the the person who was not the prom queen or the cheerleader or the fashion model. He seemed fascinated with those people, but he also seemed uh, interested just to kind of let them go. You know, songs are like, Oh, you know, like Bon Jovi, like, you know, there was a girl that I liked and finally, you know, I got her in the final scene and all that stuff. Um, Bob Seger just in these songs just seems to kind of observe them and watch them. And he's happy just to have them walk on by. And, and I don't know of anybody else, you know, who, who kind of wrote songs like that, you know, it was always like, 
you know, the prom queen and we ended up together and all that stuff. Right. But, but he had this fascination with the beautiful loser, um, kind of as a subject, but he would just kind of watch them, hmm. you know? Cool. It's interesting. Yeah. There's, there's something very, it, it's cool because he captures a nostalgic feeling with this song, with the instrumentation mostly. I mean, the story, sure, but you could almost take the lyrics out and go walk down the street and write your own song to this melody because it just, it just feels like it's taking you back. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Baker street, right? Yeah, um, very much. It, Jerry, like Rafferty. That. Jerry Rafferty. And it's also like 20 years ago by, um, uh, the, the, the chicken, the chicken man, the, the Kentucky, Kentucky fried chicken man. What's his name? Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers chicken. <laughs> Colonel, no. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> no. Uh, it's also... It's chicken. No, no. What do they call it? Kenny Rogers Chicken. No, no, no. no, no. Colonel Sanders. Chicken. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God rest, God rest Kenny Rogers. Chicken man? I'm like, who's the so, chicken man? Why do they call it Kenny Rogers Chicken? What is Kenny Rogers Chicken? He Doesn't he have a chicken? A, he, he started a restaurant franchise called, I, yeah, I think, see? Kenny Rogers Roasters or something like that. Something like that. Anyways, Kenny yeah. Rogers song 20 years ago. So between that, Baker Street, and this one, they just all have very nostalgic feelings. And they th and it's really cool when an artist can capture that in just the just an in instrumental form. That's the magic of music, really. Yeah. And right now, especially, you know, you think about artists like Bon Jovi again and Motley Crue and Poison and you know, whoever you two and whoever else out there from the eighties, nostalgic is the driver that is selling those tickets, guns and roses, all those bands. Nostalgia is selling those tickets. 14 year old kids are not going to see you two or guns and roses. Right? What about with their parents? We, yeah, we are. So yeah. yes, but, but it's interesting because you're right. Uh, Seeger was writing those songs, and we I, I, at the top of the show I said Brock Mullen. It's a it's a it's a look back, right? It's introspective. He was thirty, and a lot of these songs. That's interesting. It's a very interesting take because it's not written for kids. It's written for thirty year olds, and that was a very interesting approach back then. Yep, it's cool, man. It's cool. The song gets me every time I listen to him. It's just like, man, mm. takes me back. Takes me back to the four corners of Whitby and everything that happens around there at between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Huh? You know the Royale? I, you know oh, the Royale, Brad? dude. <laughs> you did not. I've never been in there, and I pride myself on the fact that I've never been in there. Oh, really? You've been it's inside okay the Royale? It's okay because... Have I been inside the Royal? My parents watch this show. Uh, Come to Papa is <laughs> comes up after <laughs> comes up after Main Street. <laughs> cruised right by that question. <laughs> cruised right by that question. Just like I cruised right by the Royal, never went in. May, uh, <laughs> come to Papa. <laughs> just like, just like uh, kind of boom, just kind of you know, kind of doing. A, but then he's then you come come to pop the, up. I wonder if the factoids down below here are going to say what the Royal <laughs> Hotel is. I'll anyway. leave it to the factoid maker. Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see what the factoid maker comes up with. All right. <laughs> Please don't factoid maker. Please don't factoid maker. Uh, come to Papa uh, is that was a little weird. It was a little weird. I thought it starts out like it's a cool groove. Yeah. It's really like yeah. I'm like this is wicked. Yeah, and I'm kind of like grooving to it, and mm. then and then he starts singing about what he starts singing about, and I'm kind of like oh, I hate when people call themselves Papa. You know yeah. what? Like I do. I hate when people say like "come to pop." Like like in this kind of a. So this one, this one's kind of a yeah. Yeah. But no, it I'm... does not take away. It does do, does not diminish the killer groove that I believe this song is built upon. I get it. It kind of runs counter to you know songs like "The Fire Down Below," right? Because it, it's um, it's about a woman who actually needs somebody now. Right. Correct. So yeah. Yeah, that's the interesting kind of juxtaposition there. It is. 
I don't mind the song. It's fine. It's but he's fine. still leaving it up to them. He's still leaving it up to that to make the decision. Like, if you need, if this, or, you know, if this, yeah, then come to Papa. But I just hate that come to Papa. But again, it's the, it's the fascination with the 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 oppressed, right? The the weak figure. Ship of Fools, though, kind of brings it right back. Kind of bring, kind of, kind of brings back the. Bob Seger we know and love. <laughs> good little, <laughs> you know? it's, a, it's a good little mellow vibe. I like it. It is. I was trying yeah. to get what it was, what he was singing about. Okay. Do you do you have an idea on the story no, of this one? I think it's just more introspection. You know, more introspection, just, just casting yeah. doubt. Yeah. Well, he talks about he talks about it. Sounds like you know people. He's trying to he's trying to get an answer from people. They're trying to say something to him, but then they always turn away. They never give him an answer. And then he finds himself on the ship and the, he meets the captain in the night and he wants to talk to the captain and and then the captain turns away. And then and then they get into a storm and the boat has, you know, and and then all the lives are lost except for his. And it's kind of like, well, it's kind of like, what are you trying to what are you trying to say about it? Like, what is it because he's so he's trying to ask questions? He's trying to find answers. He's trying and nobody wants to give him that he finds himself alive at the end of this because he's he, I don't know if he's curious or if he's he's wanting to discover more and that's what life is all about I don't know again I, I think it's written just as a, a meta, it, it's an interpretive metaphor right so he's just kind of putting this out there and you can interpret it however which way you, you please I know it's I was very, just telling you my interpretation of it that's what I was doing right there, there I was go. just telling you what I, what I was getting from it and then you just tried to tell me that there's no real reason for it at all, Alex. It's just, it's just whatever. I'm fucking listening to lyrics, Brent. And you're like, meh. It's like the time I'm listening to lyrics. You're like, ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. I nah, forget about it. Uh, this is, don't, oh, no, don't listen to those lyrics. Those <laughs> lyrics don't mean anything. Good song, though. Mary Lou. Yeah. It's good. It's a good way to just cl- just close the album out. Nice little rocker. Cover. Tune. Cover tune. Classic. Yeah. Who, who who was this? I don't know. I don't know in any other way. Oh, uh, who did this? This is like an old. This is a fifties tune. Seems real, real old. Obadiah Donald Jesse. What? Obadiah Donnell Jesse. Wow. It's this is a composer. Uh, yeah, it's almost like a doo wop tune. He rocked yeah, it up a little, little bit. Little. Yeah, but that voice, like his voice, like I wasn't sure at first because, that, like I said, this is a very clean kind of like doo-wop tune. And he comes in with that crazy rasp and it's like, Ooh. but it works. Yep. Like he really Piano. like elevates the song. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He yeah. Does, yeah. And the piano when this is nice. It's a really great rock and roll album, man. Love this thing. Oh, me too. I love it. I knew yeah. you'd love it. I yeah. knew that you were going to like this. So we won't yeah. talk about it on the show, but um, the second record that you would like by Bob Seger, which came out, I believe, right after, is called Stranger in Town. So listen to that one okay. as well. Yeah. Cool. Oh, well, I was going to bring there. that one or or Night Moves onto the show, but um, okay. I elected to bring Night Moves. But check out Stranger in Town because it's so Stranger good. Man. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I will. I'm not going to listen to the lyrics though. That'd be pointless. So that's, uh, that's cool. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait to get into the second Bob Seeger. Um, nice. Uh, five out of five, man. I'm a five out of five. So it's five. It's five, man. Five, five, five. five. All right. Yeah. What's next? What's going on next? Okay. How about this? We'll stay in the same time frame. All right. We will do Steve Miller fly like an eagle. Do 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 do. Good record, man. So cool. good. Again, only know only know fly like an eagle. I only know that song. Well, you're about to learn more. Sweet. All right, Steve Miller band, fly like an eagle. Did you hear that? Fleeter? It was Fleeter. Where have you been? It's like, it's quarter after 12. 
I thought you put Fleeter down. I haven't heard of him in so long oh, here. <laughs> Fleeter will live forever. I should bring Fleeter on the show. You got to bring Fleeter. I'm going to bring Fleeter and like, I'll put, I'll, <laughs> I'll put him up here. Absolutely. Oh, that's good. Fleeter's Glad to hear he's black, still around. He's blacking out right now. Yeah, seriously. Maybe someone's trying to break into my house. It's okay. Finish the show. Finish the show. Let's wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I got it. I never stopped recording. I got it. I got it, folks. What if I was like getting killed? And would you, would what you... could I do, Brent? Well, I'll I'll I guess voice. I could call nine. I guess I could call nine one one. First, I have to film it. What the hell is he barking at? You better go. You better grab a knife and go. De- <laughs> okay, bye, Brent. He's barking at you. All right, I probably should. He's, full. Is your girl... he's freaking out. Is your... Whoa, he's down here. Right there, come here. <laughs> Watch this. Check this out. I'm going to bring him on the show. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Jump Ladies up. Ladies and gentlemen, live and in person. There he is. Can you see him? Jump up. Come here. Hey. Yeah, we got him. Come here. Come. Get up there. Get up. Come here. Hey, come. Come. Up here. Come on. There you go. Look, oh, look at Tiger. Yeah, there it up. is. Can you see him? <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh. Oh, Riker, Riker, Riker what do you think? What do you think of Night Moves by Bob Seger? Can you see him? Yeah, uh, yeah, I got it. Go. No problem. That's right. okay. Wow. Look okay, at buddy, that, wait, ladies wait. and gentlemen. Okay. Wait. <laughs> you I'm always hear him. You always hear him. You never see him. Yeah, you saw him. The elusive fleeter. Uh, okay. Awesome. All right. How did he get down here? What's going on? Are you okay? I don't, I don't know how he... He must have opened a door. Did For your real? girlfriend come home from the Royal? Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I like how proud of yourself you are. You can end I'm the show with that? You can end the show yeah. with that now? I got to now. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Yeah, dude, no. When you come here, <laughs> Riker is gonna like thrash no. you. He's gonna eat one of your. Gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs>